We continue with the MSG 150 presented by Chase, and tonight a special treat. The man of a thousand voices, Hank Azaria, is going to join us. And right now he's starring in a show on IFC called Brockmire. It's about a sportscaster trying to rehab his life and his career. Open with runners in scoring position for the first time here this afternoon as Stubblefield looks at a fastball on the outside corner for a strike 2-0. and oh. Check it. 1-1. One one. Sorry about that, folks. Breaking ball misses outside this time. 1-2. and two. Just did it again. Uh, counts two and two. Uh, two and one. My goodness, three decades of broadcasting. I don't think I've ever butchered the count, at least not quite that badly. Well, it's spring training for broadcasters too, Jim. So it is. Thank you, Gabby. Stubblefield fouls that one down the right side. Two and one. No, two and three. Two and three? <laughs> Doesn't even make any sense. Sorry, folks. Check it. Two balling. Two ball. Two balls and tiny... Try... Mm -hmm. Jim, are you having a stroke? I wish. I think I have the yips. <laughs> oh, the dreaded yips. It happens to all of us. Uh, we say hello to Hank Azaria. Hello. Thank you so much for dropping by. Thanks for having me. That nice reminds me of a couple of nights where Bill's trying to do the 150, <laughs> and that'll happen as well. It, it happens. It happens. Tell not, us about not that bad. No, well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Check the outtakes. <laughs> that was Mackie Sasser level. <laughs> Chuck Knobloch Chuck Knobloch, level. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, that was bad. Tell us about the show. Jim Brockmire, as you saw, I, I'm, I'm impressed you found a clip that was not R-rated and so raunchy that you couldn't show it to your audience. <laughs> but it's about a baseball announcer who, uh, in season, that was from season three, the current season. Uh, it's a guy who, about 10 years ago, uh, walked in on his wife cheating on him, went to the ballpark to call the ball game, got blackout drunk, and started describing in detail what he saw his wife doing, and never missing the count, you know, like... I can't, see, I can't even say it here, but, you know, he'd say, really dirty things, and then Pedro misses with a slatter outside. Know. <laughs> really dirty things, though, just <laughs> use your imagination. Who are you trying to impersonate yeah. with that delivery? Is there someone in your mind when you're going through the character? Bob Costas, who uh, is, I'm uh, proud to say, a fan of the show, and who's in season three as well, he, he named it exactly correctly, or at least how I thought of it. It's the generic baseball announcer of like the 1970s, mm -hmm. a guy that just this voice seemed to be always who was delivering sports to me as I remember it. It was a lot of guys. And it's since <laughs> sports broadcasting has evolved, I think, and it's a lot more natural and naturalistic and informative. But back then you got these kind of golden throated guys yeah. who gave you a lot of cliches. <laughs> and Jim Brockmeyer is definitely one of them. And the name, too. But it's, it almost seems like, though, it spawned from a Vin Scully type of personality that it's so pleasant. Well, it's, you know, Vin Scully is a genius. Yeah. But the way he would, yeah, he was, had a solo booth, as Brockmeyer does. He can spin a yarn and then never miss the count, never miss information. about. And towards the end uh, of his career, Vin Scully was kind of going off on some wild, like, political uh, Discourses, <laughs> and then, you know, back into a fastball misses just outside. <laughs> one and oh. But I, the the guy it sounds most like to me uh, vocally is John Miller, sort of that deep kind yeah. of resonant sort yeah. of John Miller. Uh, yeah. But uh, wow, that was great. Yeah, yeah. You want to host the Knicks shows? I mean, you're ready. You're ready well, to go. I'd love I don't know if I don't know if I'm ready, now, ready for now, prime time. I know you're a big Knicks fan, so yes. Right now and then you probably catch. I catch want to get to act. the sports aspect. Yes, well, I watch you guys a lot. But yes. but. You know, I imagine better than Allen? I can't. I, no. you know, it's like Sophie's Choice. Okay. It's possible. But Troutwig is to Al. Troutwig is to me, like, because Al will have that same type of, of that deep voice. And Troutwig's got some of this going on, for sure. Right. He, Absolutely. Right. He gets yeah. lost in that sometimes. And it's like, I'll forget he's talking to me and just does, stare at him. Does Troutwig sound like that uh, off camera? He's got... He's angrier. Got off a little angrier. <laughs> but, you know, that's part of the premise of Brockmire was, do these guys sound like this at home? Yeah. You know what I mean? Do they come home and say, honey, what is for dinner? <laughs> I could definitely go for some love making tonight. <laughs> I mean, is it... I'm really cleaning it up, by the way. Like, like his pillow talk <laughs> sound like he's, he's calling a game. Yeah, is it the same rhythm, the same, you know... It, when they're, when, you know, a lot of it was like, are they, when these guys get wasted out of their minds, are they still kind of, are they announcing it like, and Brackmire reaching for his fifth <laughs> bourbon of the night, and this one is going to send him right round the bend. <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're playing this role, and you're hilarious. You're a huge sports fan, right? Huge, yes. Huge, a huge New York sports fan. 
and I'm Jets Mets Nick. So oh know, lord, exactly right. Like the, uh, the you Jets, guys, I feel all of week. you actually owe me. Like <laughs> you people, like owe me reparations of some kind. But, I mean, well, I watch you the, all the time. I'm like, please say, please let me find a positive way I can look at this. Help me. Well, and you, as you did last, I was listening to you guys last night with the draft, and okay, all right. It's all right. Look at the bright side. It's all right. You're not miserable, but then you hear the Jets do what they just did, and (laughs) yeah, that's the look. No, no, that's the look right there. Yeah, see, you don't even need to speak right now. That's the look of a Jet fan. What was that? Does anybody know what that was? Power struggle. Let me ask you this question. Okay, yes, obviously, I guess, but if you were just going to give your 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 coach that kind of mm-hmm. power would they have select should they would they have selected somebody else do you believe in Gase you think it's all going to turn out all right because eh, let the guy have that kind of power anyway and let him enact his vision or that's or what he what? had in Miami uh, the the question is is that you had a, a GM who was part of the hiring process well yeah and you know and Christopher Johnson came out and just realized that um, I once he got a little bit deeper into the what was going on in the relationships he felt like. Yeah, I didn't want this to go any further. That's after, of course, spending the, the $90, $100 million in free agency. Oh, well, yeah. But it, that's something Jerry West always said. Once there's a mistake, don't let it, don't, don't just try to cover it up. Just get rid of the mistake. And I think that's what the Jets ended up doing here is instead of making this decision during training camp, which probably would have been worse because you're making roster decisions there. As well. Am I making you feel better? See, I'm no. giving you the reasoning. That's not helpful. Well, I, well you, you know. talk about your it, Mets. See, with the Jets, Mets, and Knicks, here, here's what I always say, and I want to ask you guys. I'm, I, I like to ask professionals this question. It's, see, as I'm, I'm uh, interested, I'm a casual fan, but I, I do pay attention. And in this wonderful modern world we live in, you really can pay attention. There's a lot of information available. So, but there are certain decisions that seem to me so obvious to the casual fan mm-hmm. that don't happen. Like, for example... Shouldn't McCagnan have gone a while ago? Didn't it seem like it was time for that? You know, I it's might be just well, being reactionary. Maybe it just got to the point that the conflict was unresolvable, and maybe the, the but way before Gase. I mean, yeah, like when, if you were going to get rid of Todd Bowles, why not get rid of both of them? That that's that's the example you were. Well, yes. yeah, yeah. You know, to me, Agreed. this Mets off season, it was screamingly obvious they needed a couple more arms. I mean. I, it just you need a couple more arms. I yeah. mean, that's all. You know, he did a pretty decent job, I guess. But but the, but the bullpen obviously well, they're is, actually doing all right now. But they, there's no depth there, mm-hmm. and and uh, they're you know you can, I mean you know Wilmer Font is not the answer to anything. Oh and, boy, no. And <laughs> that's a great name, isn't it? Wilmer Font. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a Brockmeyer name. <laughs> Wilmer Font. Brockmeyer should Font. take us. Brockmeyer should take us to break. Yeah, you want to throw to break? You're gonna come back. We're gonna play a little game uh, with the Simpsons. Uh, later a game on. with the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have to stick around. Now stick around, I'm Jim Brockmeyer, and these two clowns will be right back. (laughs) For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out right there. Remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.